Okay, welcome everybody. All right, thank you, Sally, thank you. Um, Jimmy, Joey, am I live already? Is everybody seeing me? All good? I know I got a lot of people on the stream right now, just confirming. Give me a thumbs up. Joey and Jimmy, thumbs up, waiting for you guys. You're waiting? Okay, good. Fantastic, so welcome to tonight's workshop. All right, we have a legend in the house. He is in that office right there, getting ready for tonight's presentation. Um, before we do, we, before I introduce them, uh, I wanna take advantage of the fact that you ha you're here with me and that I have people there on the stream paying attention. And I wanna show you something cool, something that I'm super obsessed about right now. Uh, and the reason why I'm obsessed about it is because it does really present opportunities. Uh, they are, I've been in the marketing game for about 10 years now, obsessed about opportunities and jumping on, bo on board waves and seeing the world change consistently and trying to figure out how can I get a little bit more of that attention pie that we have out there. If you haven't noticed, the name of my company is AGM, which stands for Attention Grabbing Media. Our obsession is attention because we understand that attention always leads towards being able to sell your products and services. People that don't have enough sales, they don't have enough revenue, they simply don't have enough attention. If we can master that particular subject and we know how to capture attention, we win. So there's been many changes in the last several decades. The first major one is called the internet. That's the first major one, right? That really presented this thing that we have today that when you think about how were we able to survive? The economy survived despite a pandemic. Businesses stayed alive like us. I actually never fired a, an employee uh, during the pandemic. Actually, we grew. Many companies that uh, I know went for the same thing. How were we able to do so, such a thing? Well, because internet came about. That presented that possibility. When uh, internet kept on developing, something happened in the early 2000s. That's called social media. And that's another major change. And a lot of people got upset over it. They blamed it for the demise of children. They complained about it left and right. Everybody talked about how it was gonna ruin the world. But you know what's happened? A lot of businesses have used it to expand, to thrive, to sell products and services, and to make a lot of good in the world. A lot of people have used it to impact the world at, at large, even churches and nonprofits and so on. So I tend to look at always the pro of a particular situation, depending on which side you're on. There's only two sides, really. And the third thing that has massively changed the world and will massively change the world, as much as social media and as much as the internet, is happening right now, and it's called artificial intelligence. And we just, we just had a training, some of you guys, when I say artificial intelligence, you kind of cringe. Arrgh. Same cringe that happened when we talked about social media when it was new. Same cringe that happened when we talked about the internet. It's happening again, that's what you don't see, right? I'm telling you right now, this is the way it's gonna be from now on. Uh, before I have Artie come on stage, I wanted to show you this because I'm gonna sell you something today uh, for an opportunity to be a part of something that we did recently, and I'm gonna give you an opportunity to be a part of it at a very special uh, low entry, barrier of entry, before we actually launch it to the world. I did a training um, just two days ago, uh, just two weeks ago, a week and a half actually. Raise your hand if you were on my training. Raise your hand. Oh my God, a lot of you guys, that's awesome, right? Raise your hand if you were locally on the training. Raise your hand, okay, great. In the <laughs> Uh, raise your hand if you were on the stream, on the stream. Okay, all right, good. So raise your hand if you feel that you got enormous value from the training, right? Okay, good. I actually have some like, it was incredible. We actually had 87 different testimonials from people about how it changed their um, view of the world and what they can do with it and a lot of cool stuff with it. We've been working over the last two weeks to put together a course from it. It has over 100 lessons, and it's gonna be a game changer, and it's amazing. And let me show you this short little video. It's two minutes, so I'm gonna let my artificial intelligence self tell you about this course and what we are doing with it, all right? 
So I'm going to play it in a second. Jimmy, are we good with the sound? All right. Let's see what this guy has to say. Just to be clear, this is not me, all right? Hey there, this is Manuel Suarez. Or more accurately, this is the Manuel Suarez artificial intelligence avatar. Sounds incredible, doesn't it? Almost identical to the real Manuel, I know. A bit unsettling too, right? But rest assured, both the real Manuel and AI Manuel embrace evolution on this planet. There are two types of people in the world. Those who fear taking action, often blaming their surroundings for the obstacles they encounter. Those who firmly believe they control their own destiny and look for opportunities within their environment. The real Manuel and I were dedicated to taking control, refusing to be victims of our environment, and instead utilizing available technology to our advantage. I've just finished the best training I've ever conducted and it's almost ready for you. It's quite literally the most comprehensive training out there on how to leverage artificial intelligence for business, how to construct brands from the ground up, create websites, follow-up sequences, logos, images, videos, and even some out-of-the-box ideas like the one you're witnessing in this video, how to identify audiences, conduct surveys, and create irresistible offers for your product or service-based business. The training was so exceptional that even I was impressed. This high-value course will launch soon at a substantial price. In the coming weeks, expect to see testimonials from trainees enhancing productivity tenfold through our course. They're learning to boost sales, generate content, perfect marketing strategies, attract prospects, retain customers, and more. For special pricing before the course goes public, please text me at 813-212-2196 or send me a direct message on Instagram at MREmanuelSuarez. I guarantee you'll receive a unique price unavailable to anyone else. But you need to message me. Only those who do will get prior notification about this exclusive for launch offer. This course is set to revolutionize the way we conduct and expand businesses. I am committed to enhancing it as technology continues to evolve. Interested in securing special pricing before we launch publicly next week? Let me know by text Texting me now at 813-212-2196 or send me a DM at, at MR Emmanuel Suarez. I assure you the real Manuel will respond to your message. This message has been crafted and approved by the marketing ninja himself. P.S. Manuel wanted me to remind you, you don't know what you don't know. If your business isn't growing, it's because you don't yet know how to grow it further. Let Manuel guide you. Here's a little secret about Manuel. Manuel's brands and those he manages are projected to generate over $270 million in revenue in 2023 alone. So, you could say he's pretty knowledgeable about business, marketing, and success. Why not join him on this rocket ride? Text the real Manuel at 1 813 212 2196. See you in the next video. <laughs> see I'm just having a lot of fun with this technology uh, the uh, this video I literally put it together half an hour ago I said I just had an idea and I said I'm gonna put it together let me write a script and just like that I added some b-roll so you can see on the back and now we got a video uh, there's a lot more that you can do with it to make it more human uh, like you can work on the inflections I just literally put that together last minute but there's a lot more that you can do with it and I even train people on how to do this uh, some of you actually bought a ticket uh, for our mastermind that we had two weeks ago just from one of these videos that I put together last minute. So there's a lot of practical uses to this technology that uh, it's, it's actually quite incredible and it's, it's going to keep on developing. So you might see this and you might be like, wait a second, I'm not, I'm not really interested in doing that. But what you don't know is all the practicality to it, like literally creating brands and logo creation and branding and, and customer audience research and creating websites and email sequences and follow up. And it's pretty mind blowing. I, I can tell you that people here in this training were like, they couldn't even believe it. So uh, this course is going to be ready next week. Uh, we're working like around the clock. There's about 12 people working on this program. Uh, GB, why don't, you, why don't you tell them a little bit, come over here very quickly, and uh, tell them what, because Jimmy has been the one directing the course project. Why don't you tell them a little bit about what the lessons are that they will get once they get access to this course? Oh yeah, absolutely. So, check this out. We have probably close to, it's like 120, 160 different lessons that you're gonna get. We dive into, you know, what is AI? What is it really? What's the history of AI? And then also the different platforms that are out there right now that you can use, like ChatGPT, uh, MidJourney, all these wonderful platforms, and HeyGen, which is the name of the one that, how we made Manuel right there. So we basically we chopped them all down in these little bite-sized bits here. And so introductions, we've got how to make your life, you know, as a business owner, 100 times easier, right, and more efficient. And 
right here, what I'm, I'm thinking is going to be really cool is whenever they dive in and actually do some of the stuff where with Mid Journey and everything, and show you basically how you can use that to create images to help you with your brand and also ChatGPT, how they work hand in hand. So it's really freaking cool. So, <laughs> I mean, the, li yeah. the list goes on and on. I wanted, I want, I wanted you to see a little bit about what you will get in this course. Uh, anybody that had a ticket to this event already gets access to it, so you guys don't have to worry about buying it again. But anybody that wants access to this training, uh, it's going to help you make a lot more growth. It's going to help you expand quite a bit, all right? So anybody that wants to sign up, we do have a pre-sale going on. If you guys visit marketingevent.ai, I'm going to show you right here, um, then you'll see what the pre-sale is like. I can tell you right now that the pre-sale is a massive discount for where we're going to end up. This course is going to sell for thousands of dollars. Thousands of dollars, all right? And I'm going to have this offer available for um, marketingevent.ai. I, I think, uh, let me see if I have the wrong link. Uh, this course is going to sell for over $1,000. We have a special just for uh, the next 48 hours. Anybody that wants to get a pre-sell, just because I want to start making a push. Uh, on this, let's see, it is marketingevent.ai forward slash sign up. You got to do www.marketingevent dot AI forward slash sign up and let's see what does this uh, look like so you see uh, what you're gonna learn in this course is right here the different areas of the course like the basics of it creating e-commerce websites creating a brand identity and brand strategy uh, you're gonna see here content creation for your brand how to accomplish ten times more uh, with the use of some of these tools uh, sales explosion, sales funnels, taking your business to the next level. We just really did something incredible. All right, so if anybody wants to sign up, you can see some of the testimonials in there also. People that actually got, their lives got, um, they were blown away with it. Uh, there's a lot of that, all right? So anybody that wants to sign up, you get to pay right now. Again, this is going away on Thursday. Let's see, how much do you pay? It says over here, 697 for uh, lifetime access to this training. And as I actually change it and improve it, you guys will get access to that stuff, all right? So anybody that wants to sign up, you can go ahead and sign up ASAP, all right? That's marketing event, www.marketingevent.ai forward slash sign up, okay? That course is gonna be launched probably middle of next week and you'll get notified when it's ready for you to start moving through it. Okay, that being said, let's get to today's workshop. Today we have a very special guest. This individual that's with us today is a person that I am very highly interested in. When he talks, I listen. When he talks, I learn. When he talks, he brightens me up. He teaches me things that I didn't know were even possible, and he helps me improve what I have going on. He's somebody that I consider to be a better marketer than myself. And I don't say that about a lot of people. I say that about him. He's a very smart human being. Uh, I sat down with him for a few minutes to talk about my book, and he just revolutionized me in just a few minutes and taught me what I needed to fix on that. So uh, it's, been, it's been an incredible journey with me learning from Artie over the last uh, several weeks, more than a month, having some time to spend with him. And for me, it's a pleasure to have him in the house today to talk about marketing strategy. A few of the highlights of Artie Marin, all right? So marketing and management for 50 years. So that's longer that I've been in this body, all right? Interview Larry King, interviewed by Voice of America. Clients that he's had over the years in his service include LA Times, Washington Post, Bank of America, Teledyne. He consults billionaires on their businesses. He's been able to work with many Fortune 500 companies. This individual is somebody that you pay attention to when he talks. And he has a great presentation for us tonight, so without further ado, Mr. Artie Marin, welcome to AGM. Yeah, I'm so excited about his introduction. Uh, 
Yeah, let me start and say that um, the introduction was overly generous. I thank him very much, and I'm very glad to be here tonight with you to share not so much the 50 years, but the journey in the sense of what's happening now. When you compare the current mechanics, the current technology, to when uh, um, I might send out a letter. All right, for those who don't know what a letter is, <laughs> it's a, and it takes a week, you know, and you get, get somebody, it takes a week, and sometimes it doesn't arrive, amazing. Uh, and there's no IT to call, you, that's it, you know. I want to talk about intelligent promotion. Intelligence has the connotation of finding out. In a military sense, intelligence is determining the moves of the enemy. In marketing, we're determining the thinking process. What is it that I should say or do, and how do I say it, which will create the kind of response I want? And there's an answer to that. I remember, uh, probably in 1982, I was giving a talk to Veterinary Medical Association. And um, I got there early, as I always do. Why is that? Because you never know who's coming early. And you get a little more what we call face time. Um, so this <laughs> I was gonna say, elderly gentleman walked in. How ironic. And uh, he said, oh, who are you? I said, I'm Artie Marin. You're giving the talk tonight. Oh, you're giving the talk. The marketing talk? Yeah. Well, nobody knows. Nobody knows. I said, well, actually, I, I beg to differ with you. Someone knows. Oh, who, you? No, the client, the customer, the prospect. They know. What could be simpler than ask the people you want to reach after you find out who you want to reach. That's a little exercise. We're going to do it tonight. And then don't repeat it back to them. Be innovative. Figure out a way to, let me give you an example. I was contacted in 1980 by Howard Ruff. Howard Ruff was the gold author, standard, big name in gold. 80s were a gold era. And uh, I was hired to do his next postcard, for which, by the way, he was going to be sending out, if it worked, a million postcards. This is 80, 20, 40, over 40 years ago. It's a lot of money. In fact, I even said that. I mean, aside from being a little nervous, that he's going to send out you know, all these postcards on my uh, innovation. And he said, no, I'm not going to send out a million. I'm going to send out 5,000. And then I'm going to see how that works. And if it works well, I'm going to send out 10,000. And if that works, I'm going to send out 50,000. And that's how I get to a million. OK. So I went to the, the gold standard, pardon the pun, of marketing, which is survey. But. I, I advise and I like to see some innovation. Don't be normal. What is normal? Normal is the, the average of competency. Manuel didn't build this from being average, right? It was above average. Well, how does that happen? By taking a little more time, by looking for the bright idea, by, by, by contacting your inner creativity, whatever you want to call it, but think it through. Anybody can knock out a survey that says, what do you think about this? That's OK. It's, it's pedestrian, meaning it's kind of very normal. Well, Howard Ruff wanted members to his newsletter, which was like two or $300 a year, which is now like thousands. So I thought it through. <clears throat> And I created a survey, which was, if you had an eighth day of the week, what would you do with it? Because the idea is that gold 
rises in, in value, and therefore, you'll have more time. If you invest properly, you're buying time, not only money. We conducted that survey, and it was uh, very uh, effective, and we took the results of, I won't get into it now, but it, it, it was kind of fishing and time off with family. We compiled it and we created a promotional campaign that he used for the postcard, and it was, it was very successful. I'm just sharing the elements. Let me go to more current, because really the message I'm sharing with you now is that surveys, intelligence, is not just nice. It's not a nice thing to do. It's vital. It's the, it's the key element to getting a response, and marketing's all about response. That's all of it. <laughs> and I mentioned the testing because one of the, one of the real values of surveys and, and, and marketing is testing. You can do a test cheaply and then tweak it. Well, let's go to present time. Anybody know how much a 30-second spot in the Super Bowl is? How much it costs? How much? It's about $5 million. $5 million. 30 seconds. Just think about that. But you think they're hoping? You think Pepsi and all these places that went in there and they bought this time? It's like, oh, man, you know, $5 million. I hope this works. That's marketing by hope. They're not doing that. They've already pre-tested this. They've surveyed it. They've gone to panel groups, which is something I'm going to cover a little later. And they've had people enclosed in a room, and they showed them it, and they tweaked it, and so on. Even if you remember, not the last, not the very last Super Bowl, but the one before, with the QR code, remember that? Yeah. Well, when I first saw that, and I'm sure many of you thought that, that was the stupidest thing you ever saw. I thought it was brilliant. It was brilliant. And the reason why it was brilliant is because they surveyed it. They already played it. They knew. You want to go into that environment, and you're spending $5 million for 30 seconds, you ain't hoping, right? Now, you can have great success or medium success. But I want to say one other thing, too. Because even though Manuel, I, and all those who are experts are really strong about survey and all of that, there's judgment here. And what aligns with survey is talent or product. You have a poor product, there's no survey in the world that's going to help you. Okay? Let me give you an example. Supposing we're a musical um, operation, and all of us, we're all staff here, and, and this is 1964-ish, and in walks four Flop hair, floppy haired kids who don't speak a whole lot of English, they don't understand a word they're saying. And they say, We're here because we want a record deal. So now we're, we're interviewing them, all of us, right? So the first thing I say to them, because we're in New York, see, this is where I grew up. I'm a kid from the Bronx. So I said, Well, the first thing you can do is cut your hair. I mean, that hair is way too long. See his hair? That was long hair in 1964. Never mind down to your shoulders. First thing you do is cut your hair. Now, what's the name of the group? Beatles? Are you kidding me? That's a bug, man. No, you got to change your name. So the point I'm making is that you listen with judgment to what I'm saying tonight, right? Because there's the product 
and the performance. It's, it's, what, it's what is the gist of this? What are we marketing? And how good is it? This is a key factor. So it's talent and product and, and innovate. A few other examples. Airbnb came on like gangbusters, fantastic. And then they started getting stories. They had weird things happening in the houses. So what did they do? Did they immediately jump up and say, no, no, we're OK? No, they did a survey. And they surveyed on two things, safety and trust. Because if I don't trust Airbnb that I'm going into a, a safe location or whatever, then I'm never going to them. So this was millions of dollars based upon finding out what was the bottom line, what do people trust? And here's a, an innovative way of doing that, of course, is positioning, which is if I asked you all and we, we got together on the answers and we said, well, you know, who or what represents trust to you? Okay. Because an error in marketing is to take the result of the survey and throw it back to the prospect. So let's say, oh, trust is an eagle. Okay. okay. So what do we do? We say, our company is like eagles. And it's, no, it's too. Okay. Now, you could have an eagle flying and say something or whatever. You, you're trying to compare the, the end result of your survey in a way that's innovative. They did that, and, and they made millions from it. Another one was Starbucks. They wanted to liven up things a little bit. So I don't know if you remember the campaign, but it was uh, the Starbucks idea survey, or my idea, my Starbucks. And they invited people to send in all manner of ideas, and the winner would have this or that. And it, it engendered, it created interest, participation, and it showed that they cared about doing something about Starbucks. In fact, uh, that was, as I recall, what brought in Wi-Fi into Starbucks, amongst other things, was these kinds of suggestions. Now let's take Another example of why you really want to be, have great certainty, Coca-Cola. Now, I remember one day on TV, this ad that came out, and it said, New Coke. And I immediately, as a marketer, I thought, am I, am I hearing right? Coca-Cola was America, was was, you know, endeared to every heart, and it, was, it said, new Coke, and all sorts of ads, like, it tastes better, and, you know, and so on. Okay, so what happened here? Well, first of all, it was a disaster. Okay, I'm going to explain why. But it was a disaster. Letters were pouring in, I want my Coke. Yeah, but this tastes better. Yes, it did. They did taste tests with Pepsi and Coke. And Pepsi was winning. So they figured, hey, we'll just, you know, do what they do and we'll up ours and it'll be fine. But it wasn't fine because they failed to take into fact the emotion, the connection to Coke. And people didn't care to this day. To this day, they don't care about new Coke. I mean, I suppose some people like it. But it's still, the, the original Coke is still the number one selling factor. So number one, they didn't take emotion into consideration. Secondly, I did some research on this because I was fascinated by it. I mean, that's a monumental mistake. And what I found out was they based it all on these taste tests and kind of certain marketing research. And when they finished, they didn't test the launch. They didn't pre-test the launch. What did I say before? The, the value and economy in marketing is in the testing. 
You can, you can go after, you know, you, you don't need to spend thousands of dollars. You can spend less by testing a segment of the market. See how it goes. And they didn't do that. If they did, they would have found out in the first 2,000 emails or whatever, well, I don't care how it tastes. Don't touch my Coke. Right? In fact, it, it's been labeled in marketing circles as the, the Coca-Cola fiasco, right? One very easy way or simpler way to get surveys done is through what we, uh, we all know and have heard, influencers, opinion leaders, um, because one message can be spread immediately as opposed to trying to get people individually. I made a list of some of those opinion leaders that we don't often think of, but before I give you that, I want to say what comes before worrying about getting to opinion leaders, and that is the amount of communication that you put out there. Communication begins with quantity, not quality. What we're talking about now in terms of, in terms of survey, that's a lot of quality. But how much emanation are you doing? This man here who built this, if I call it empire, he communicates a lot. That's a lot of emanation. That's a lot of origination. That comes before content, right? It's, it's understanding the channels and then building the content and getting it out there. And I say that because one group of opinion leaders that you can contact who can spread the word about you, who already know you, are family and friends. But you'll be amazed when you go to Aunt, Aunt Sheila and, and Uncle Joe and you ask them, uh, what do I do? No, you, uh, yeah, you got that company there, right? That, uh, but you don't know who Joe is seeing every day. Those close to you need to understand what you're doing and you have a, a, an edge. Of course, you have uh, Online reviews, testimonials, very important. People go to that. Scientific studies have shown that they will go to the reviews almost immediately. Now, how do you do that? You solicit responses from those you've serviced. And you only post the good ones. Now, is that cheating? No, it is what it is. Why, I'm, I'm obligated to post somebody who says, that was a ripoff. <laughs> Experts or other professionals. Now, here's the sec a secret that I don't share too much. How do you get to an expert or a professional? To say, hey, I'd like to get with you to tell you what I do so you can tell everybody about me. No, I don't think so. But a large majority of experts and professionals would love to be interviewed by you for whatever purpose you may have. They tend to not turn down interviews, especially if you're in their industry. So what are you looking for? You're looking for somebody in your industry that's not competitive, right? So if you're selling cars, then you want to get close to insurance people. Or whatever. Maybe you go to the top insurance person, you know, who's selling car insurance. Say, look, I'd love to come down and interview. I'm going to put it out to my database. I want to promote insurance, and you're the guy. They're usually, oh. Okay, some of them have never been interviewed. Maybe it's not the top guy, maybe it's the marketing director, it doesn't matter. But you can get in front of them, bring a, a recorder, bring your phone, whatever, it's no big deal. And you do the interview. Oh, how did you do this in front of them? What is, if it was good communication, what does he want to do with it? Invariably, he says, can I have a copy of that? 
I'd like to send it out to my database. What you've just done is not only communicated to who knows how many in his database, but you've gained status. Because now all those people, and then you're going to take it and send it to your database, and you are interviewing the marketing director of so-and-so, the president of so-and-so. Experts and professionals. Online communities and forums, word of caution. If you're going to join a forum, if you're going to join a group, <laughs> I remember way back, this is probably in the middle 70s, I was giving a talk on marketing at a seminar. And someone raised their hand and they said, listen, I, I know about groups. I was talking, talking about groups. I know about groups. Uh, but I'm not, I'm, I'm in groups, I, I'm not getting anywhere. Oh, what groups? Well, it's the Kiwanis, the Rotary, and, uh, and the Lions Club. I see. He said, yeah, but I, nothing. I've been going there a year, you know, every meeting. I said, well, why did you join those groups? He said, to get business. I said, well, that's why you don't have any. You have to do things for the right reasons. Do you, what, what's your hobby? What do you do? Well, I, I, I like collecting antique cars. Is there an antique car club in town? Yes. Are you a member? No, I'm too busy with the Rotary and the Kiwanis <laughs> and the... You do things for the right reasons. If you join groups and clubs with the purpose of getting business, they smell that a mile away. But it's a very good line because once you're there and you're interesting to them and you're interested in them, then the words come out. Oh, what do you do? And one thing leads to another. And of course, we have influencers and so on. scientists, religious leaders, family and friends I mentioned. But there's three points that I want to share that go along with this to keep in mind. One is, again, number one, the quality of the product or service. You can get a big jump, but you don't get lasting value. Second, trust and credibility. This is why you want the testimonials. How do you get a testimonial? My good friend, Bill, many, many years ago, 85, 86, taught me this. Brilliant. It's so simple. You don't send a note to somebody and say, hey, can you send me a, a testimonial? You're still waiting for that one, right? That they, they say, oh, this is great. I'm going to send you a testimonial. Forget it. Hasn't arrived. But they tell you they're winning. They tell you, hey, this is a great product or I use this, or whatever. Okay. So tell me, well, what about it that you like so much? And you're taking notes. Okay. Well, I like this. And you repeat it back to them. Oh, let me just make sure I got this. So what you're saying is, you enjoyed this part and that part, and you do this and that. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. I'd like to send you that. I'm going to send you an email with that in it. Look it over, make sure it fits you and everything and uh, send it back to me. I'd like to publish it. Oh, OK. It's done. Or sometimes I just ask them, does that make it, does it sound like it? Can I use that, what I just told you? Yes, good, it's done. Quality, trust and credibility. And last, but not least, their personal need or desire. They have to need it or want it. And that means you've got the middle third. What I mean by that is, generally speaking, if your content and your promotion is decent, you're going to get, let's take 100 people, you're going to get 30 interested. And there's going to be another 30, or 33 and a half to be exact or whatever, who are never buying your product, at least not for the next 10 years. They can't afford it, they don't want it, it doesn't fit, whatever. It's that middle that you're after, because you're going to get a good 
matter of the first third, but you're looking to get that middle of it. And that means having that last point, which is de determining their needs. Again, before we end, I'm gonna go through a process of determining what their needs are. Now, I wanna bring this up a notch. I've had uh, many mentors, many people I've studied over the years, very, very well names in marketing, and of course, my current study with Manuel Suarez. I tend to utilize my education that I got from the educator and philosopher L. Ron Hubbard. And I'm gonna tell you why. Because it's innovative, it's deep, and by being deep I mean one datum gives me a whole big understanding. I can tell you, um, um, you know, go and work your parents and your friends and get them talking about you. And that is a, a, a procedure. But where does that procedure come from? It's far better to know the underpinnings, the fundamentals, the laws, which is, by the way, the name of my book, The Natural Laws of Management. I have a surprise for you at the end. So bear with me because I'm gonna share with you something extremely astute on the subject of marketing. And it's something that Hubbard wrote in a piece on, on certainty, certainty. Manuel Suarez is selling what? Certainty. You just heard him up here and, and every other thing you've ever seen him do is great certainty. Where does that come from? It comes from his ability to do something very special. Here's what Herbert said, certainty is the measurement of the effort and locations and distances necessary to make two points coincide at a certain instant in time. Don't fall asleep, I'm gonna repeat it again. I want you to think about this. What is marketing? It's impelling, it's sending out a communication to arrive at a certain point to close the distance and have them respond. And that's what that's saying. It's the measurement of the effort. Oh, what's the measurement of the effort? Survey, intelligence, that's how you measure effort. Am I being do I have to, to, to give this a big push or can I be more subtle? How, how am I gonna reach them? So we're measuring the effort and the locations and distances, what's that? Locations are who's the public, where are they? How do I reach them, what channel? Especially so in social media. So a lot of it just goes back to survey in fact, in, in being an executive, Hubbard listed out a few things, and one of them, he said that, that the whole story of marketing is told in just a few words. One finds or strengthens or creates a demand. Finds, strengthens, or creates what? A demand, he didn't say a response. Demand is a very strong word. This is what Manuel is doing. He's putting out there and saying, you, you need this. I want you to demand these services and products. And that's also how you can uh, um, be economically viable because you can charge more for it if people demand it. Okay, I'm gonna step back just a moment and repeat something I, I said earlier about how much communication. In a piece that Mr. Hubbard wrote 
on communication, which is the backbone of all marketing. The area you can determine or influence directly, it, it, sorry, the area you can determine, determine or influence is directly regulated by the amount of communication you have into that area, no matter how painful it may be to you. Amount of communication. The determinism of the actions in the area directly and immediately depend upon the amount of communication you've got into the area. Anybody ever recognize? How much traffic do you get from manual? Plenty. Yeah, but you know, I heard that, you know, if you keep re repeating, you go, you keep doing that, people are bothered and they don't want to hear that. The right message to the right public is all that matters. The people who turn you off are not your customers. They're not your clients, they're not your patients. But if you have a scarcity, if you only have 500 to send to, you can't afford to lose them, right? You're nervous, I don't wanna lose 10 people. Believe me, when I first started, I was like that. I had my database and, you know, until some of my mentors came along and said, hey, come on, man, let it out there. You know, I was sending out like 500 at a time and being very gentle. And if I could just compliment what you said, Artie, jump in very quickly. Yeah. So what Artie just said, it's, it's funny how similar our philosophy is. The, the same one. What Artie just said right now, I say it in a lot, in a much rougher way. My philosophy is block or buy. That's what I say. I say people are either gonna block you or they're gonna buy from you. Your job is to keep on communicating to them because you have a conviction about the quality of your products and services. And if you don't believe in it, then you hold back from communicating because you don't believe in it strong enough. If you did believe in it, you know that that person buying your product or buying your service will make their lives better because of your ability to help them with your products and services. So it's a conviction. It's not that, it's not a money motivation thing. It's not that you wanna make more money, even though we do wanna make more money, right? But you have a conviction above all that if you buy my services, I'm gonna help you build a better future for yourself and your family. And if I don't communicate to you enough, I'm, le I'm actually doing you a disservice by not allowing you to buy my stuff. So I always say, listen, you gotta communicate. You gotta obsessively communicate. If they don't want you, like I just said, they're not your public. Block, they're gonna block you. It's very simple to unsubscribe. Simple to say stop. You don't want your communications, you get out of that list. And that's totally fine, but you keep on communicating to that person, either makes the investment in you, or says, you know what? I'm tired of you, Manuel, stop communicating. Okay, great, maybe down the journey, you'll get active again, and there's ways for us to bring people back on. But it's very powerful when you have that conviction. Right, thank you. And the word conviction is coming from what? The quality of your product or service. It goes back to that again, doesn't it? You know, and, and the idea that you're not going to relinquish the right to communicate heavily is very powerful. It's what I call CQ. The IQ can get in the way. IQ says, oh, no, maybe I shouldn't, you know, it's a little too, what's CQ? Care quotient. What he said there is gold. He said, I want people to have my product because it's valuable, because it helps people. So he's not gonna let anything get in the way. And that's the attitude and promotion you should have. But it starts with, on a scale of 50 to 100, how would you rate the quality or value of your product? Okay. And the answer's got to be uh, minimum 98. And if it isn't, then you will let pebbles get in your way. Okay? Why would you allow stops into the channel? Because you're a little unsure. Because why? Conviction rolls over barriers. Now, if I haven't said enough about the value of survey, I'm gonna give you some shocking data. 
I did some research the other day, and I found a story from a 1900s British scientist. His name was Francis Galton from Plymouth, England. Did you know him? No. <laughs> now, Galton was a scientist involved in statistics, hereditary statistics. And there just happened to be a big uh, livestock uh, event near him. So we went down there to look at the livestock and so on. As he's walking through, he sees an ox, on a, on, not on a scale, but just an ox, and wagering going of people buying tickets to take a chance on guessing the weight of the ox. Okay? So they buy a ticket, and then they hold a big day, and so on and so forth. Okay. So Gong goes home, and he's thinking, I wonder what, what they're guessing at, you know? So we went back, and he bought the tickets from the guy. I'm going to give you an example. So 800 people bought the tickets. So you have 800 people guessing at the weight. And by the way, the people guessing were farmers, butchers, uh, athletes. So they were all walks of life. The results were published then in Nature magazine back in the 1800s. And he talked about it as similar to democracy, how people vote. And, and those votes uh, choose making the average person capable of electing somebody. And he called it the collective wisdom. Now, he figured the group was going to be way off because this was a mix of all manner of oddball people. But he was wrong. I'm going to give you the results. The crowd guessed, and this is taking all the answers and dividing by the number, and the answer they gave was 1,188 pounds, and the actual weight was 1,187. Isn't that astonishing? Survey. The collective, so what are we doing when we're surveying a group? We're serving people, we're getting what? The average so we can hone it down. I'll tell you uh, one of the best surveys, I was talking to Manuel about this, and we probably should do it here, is a distinctive kind of panel survey where you bring in four or five or six people of different ages and, and, and uh, 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 desires and what they're doing and so on. And you put them in a room and you have an officiator who then begins asking questions. So let's say you're selling bottled water. So we get them all in the room, maybe we bought them lunch, and we say, okay, water, which one do you buy? What about you? And they, they just chit chat, and they say, well, why is that? And a good evaluator can take them, it's what I call a V. So you take them from this broad, everybody's got a different view, and now they're getting a little tighter, and a little tighter, and a little tighter, and now it comes down to the point about water that got the most interest was X. You did that maybe in an hour, two hours. Very, very valuable. It's the wisdom of a group. Now, you can bring them back in six months because times change, right? Remember what I said about time? You promote to a passing parade, not a standing army. Just marketing, because marketing is managed like a passing parade, not like a standing army. Exactly. So things change, environments change, right? So that was one example. I thought you'd enjoy that. But let me give you another one. This one is pretty wild. There was a, this is all true. Um, 
there was a submarine that got lost in North Atlantic, and the name of the submarine was the Scorpion. Uh, it was 1968. They knew the last location, but nothing else. Just no data, no scrap, nobody knew anything. So the, the person responsible collected up just what you and I would do. Half a dozen experts on location and submarines and depth and, and all these things. And instead of having a group discussion, he went individually and said, where do you think it is? This is all we have. This is the last destination. That's it. That's all we have. What do you think happened? And the guy says, I, I, it seems to me, from my purview, that it would be here. And he says where it is. And then they went to the next guy. And they did that. I forget how many he said, but it was quite a few. And they gave him the best guess. But no one of the pieces of information could tell him exactly where it was. He did a, f he did a calculation with a special formula that determines or, or evaluates expectation. And he came up with an, a location that was not the location that the group had come up with. Five months later, after it disappeared, there w it was found. And it was found 220 yards from where the group said it would be. Is this magic or what is this? Who wants to be a millionaire? Remember that TV show? Okay. So you know when somebody's in trouble, um, uh, they, can, they can take a guess at it or so on. They can call a friend. When they do that, I thought this was fascinating, the friend was right 65% of the time. Now, they also can shout out to the audience. And the audience gives an answer. The audience answers were correct 91% of the time. I'm making the case for the, what you're after in a survey is the aggregate. What, what, we're trying to take this group of your prospects and, and kind of mold them into a single person. So one, I'm just going to give you one more quote from Socrates before I get into how you can mold that person. Because Socrates said, he's talking about oratory, what one could argue I'm doing now. And he said, it's the art of enchanting the soul, and therefore, he who would be an orator has to learn the differences of human souls. They are so many. So we're, we're going after taking the differences and paring them down into something that we can, uh, uh, we can work with. But surveys are not a single occasion. I remember in, in, in a lot of my management consultant I did over the years, I said, well, do you survey? Oh, yeah. I'd be very proud. Oh, yeah, we survey like twice a year. You mean not surveying on every single product and service? Why would you not? Well, because I have to ship it out, and I don't know if it, you know, and, well, why isn't there a survey in the package? We pay them a little extra, we give them a discount, whatever it is. We need that feedback. So on the one hand, we need to reach our public. On the other hand, we can't get too narrow. I'm just reading an article that said it's all about balance. If you tried to reach everyone, 
you will likely appeal to no one. But if only a handful of people meet your criteria, then you've gone too far. Okay? So how do we develop this? Here's the list. I'll be happy to send this to you separately or whatever, but what, what is the desired action of your target audience? Do you want them to buy you a product or service? Do you want them to donate? What, it is, what is it you want them to do? Then let's look at the demographics. Who or what group of people or demographics are going to be most interested in that? Examples, an age group, a gender. I just had a client who had a health product, and it was 25 to 40-year-old women. That was it. They found a survey. They did the survey. They got that age group. That was their demographics. Where are they located? Uh, what's their status? What's their income level? And of course, if you're doing Facebook, and especially if you're working with AGM, that, that data is built in, so you get a, a chance at it. What do they think about? You know, their personality, their attitudes, what are their values? And especially now, what are their challenges? We call them pain points. Where's the friction in their business or in their life? Well, you can find that out by survey. Well, yeah, but you know, my English is not that great. My comment is not great. I can't figure, hey, it's a question. What bothers you? We don't have to get all fancy, right? I know people who haven't surveyed yet because they're waiting for the perfect question. There is no perfect question. How does your product or idea help them? A, what's their pain point? B, how can we help them? If you can find out, how do they make a decision? Okay. Example, um, when I had my, uh, one of my companies, we would invariably, and as you probably have, run into, uh, this sounds great, I need to speak to my husband, my wife, my brother, whatever. Now, there's all sorts of techniques out there of, well, why would you have to do that? You don't need to do that, and so on. And that's fine. Some of them are workable. Um, but you have to be comfortable with what works for you. I was not in a rush. First of all, it was a $35,000 program. So, but I did say, ah, who do you need to speak to? My husband. OK, good. So what is he, um, how does he make decisions? Okay. I'm, I'm going to find out a little more about that person, right? And then here's the ultimate survey question. John, Karen, I understand that you want to speak to your husband, whatever. That's great. No problem. On a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being I really want this product, how would you rate your desire? Well, it's, um, so like seven, you're not making that sale. You know what's going to happen? They're going back to their other person and say, oh, this I want to speak to you. I found a program. You know, it'll help me. What does the other person say immediately? That? How much is it? 35,000. Oh, forget it. <laughs> and what does my prospect say? OK. They put up a fight. Do they argue? No because they're not a 10. So if I say to her, on a scale of 1 to 10, she says 7, I'm going to back off and say, OK, good. Well, that's fine. But I want to cover one other thing with you. i got to move her to a 10. I'm going to go back. What is it I'm not getting? Why am I not getting a 10? OK, now she's a 10. Yes, I want to do this. All right, next question. On a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being now, how soon do you want to do this? Because if she says, well, I was thinking about six months, it's a different category. Okay? But she says, now, then what do I do? OK, and now I'm going to educate her or him on how to close the spouse. Because at this point, 
She is my rep. So I'm going to give her some education, some material. Here's what I want you to do. I have a video on YouTube. When you go home, tell this person, I just had a great experience, and I want to show you something. Let me introduce it. So they watch the video together, and he or she says, oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, let me tell you. And now she's got her notes. Yeah, I wrote down some of the key points. First of all, and she's excited. And he or she says, wow, looks like you really want to do this. Yeah, I think it's great. Yeah, OK. That's all coming out of survey, or put it another way, intelligence. We need to know how they make a decision, what the decision maker thinks. I mean, there's a whole list here. I can send it to you separately. Uh, but the, this factor of the pain point, what challenges do you have? What would be a barrier? You want to get into that and have a discussion about it uh, if you can. All right. Any questions before I offer my little gift? Pain points? Ah, okay. Yeah, pain points. Like, what's so the question where's the is, friction in their life or business? Just so we can share with the audience the question, she's asking that. Um, what was your question again? Yeah, like before, the, what are the, to find out what are the challenges to do something. Can we put up the QR code? So, f to find out QR what code? are the challenges, how do you go about finding out the challenges? Straight ahead yeah. question. Okay. What concerns you about this subject? What are you looking for? Again, if I'm selling water, right? Have you bought water before? Yeah, what was the best one? What about it that you don't like? Okay. But here's the point, very important. You don't take the first answer as the pain point. It's the initial system. It's initial, uh, the initial uh, signal that there's something there that you need to work on. So if they say, well, you know, it, it tastes funny. Oh, tell me more about that. Right? You want to try and get into it a little further. And when you get an area that, you, that is sufficient, you'll know it. It just becomes obvious, like they're, they're emotionally more attached to it. Uh, and you learn that as you keep doing them. But you can practice it. You see, have, uh, drill it. Have somebody. Um, um, have a whatever you. What is your product? What do you sell? Okay, vitamins. So, vitamins. Okay. You're going to start selling vitamins. Right. Okay. So you're selling vitamins. So now, what am I going to do? Am I going to go into somebody and say, "Hey, you know, I want to talk to you about vitamins"? No. Tell me about your health. Is anything bothering you? Do you have any fears? Anything like that? Um, well, yeah, you know, I have trouble sleeping. The big mistake when people are selling things like, say, vitamins, she's got a vitamin, that, man, they'll go right to sleep. So the guy says, I have trouble sleeping. Says, oh, trouble sleeping. Oh, I got to tell you about our product. No. It's not painful enough yet, OK? I have trouble sleeping. Oh, tell me about that. Really, how often does that happen? Really, four, four times a week? Wait a minute, let me get this straight. You get up in the, what time do you go to sleep? So you don't fall asleep till three in the morning? How do you work? I know, it's really tough. How long has it been going on? Oh, it's now about two years. Oh my God. Well, we need to do something about this. You wanna get it handled? I wanna tell you something, and now, you can move your product in, you see? So there's a, there's a bit of a, of a dance that happens first. You've got to pull it out and make sure that, that there it is truly a pain point. Because sometimes I've had people say to me, oh, yeah, I'll tell you a mistake I made once. Somebody said um, I was talking about helping their business. And the guy said, yeah, and I, you know, I work seven days a week. You know, I said, are you married? He said, yeah. I said, 
you come on my program, I will get it down to five days. And he looked at me and he said, who said I want five days? <laughs> oh, okay. So I knew not to <laughs> presume anything, okay? You know? If I, if I could add about uh, what Artie's talking about, getting that data. We have tools in front of us right now that really facilitate your ability to get feedback from people. One of them is called social media. You can use your own Facebook following, your friends, to get data. And it just takes that to a whole new level speed to be able to get the information that you need so you can deliver on those needs that people have. So using a Facebook profile, using your Instagram following, asking for people's feedback is going to help you understand what pain points they have and how you can address them. There's a lot of value in, uh, in just using these people to get that data. Because when, when Artie says he's going to talk about a marketing strategy that always wins, you can't really lose with a strategy that is delivering on the exact needs that a customer or prospect has. You can't. Like it's, I always say that on the, on the game of marketing, the worst possible creative campaigns, video ads, graphics, copyright, et cetera, will, will sell products very well or services to the most qualified people. But it doesn't work the other way around. Why? Because you're delivering on the needs and wants that people have with your products and services. So it's about finding that right audience, and, and you have to find it through these processes that really helps you create a winning marketing strategy. Thank you. Um, about uh, 15, 18 years ago, I did a 90-minute um, presentation on marketing management in terms of the aspects of marketing management. It was created into a video, uh, and that's part of what I want you to go over uh, this material when you see the QR code. Uh, I did eight short videos on statistics. Why? Because you measure marketing with stats. Um, I did another short video on goals, another one on uh, the ability to determine what, how the quality of your product, uh, another one on the three miracles of business, which some of you may have heard, and mostly the last one I wanted to share with you was the 45-minute video I did on uh, the elements of Hubbard management. And the last 15 minutes was spent on my talking about my personal time with L. Ron Hubbard. Um, this is sold for about $454. It's $97 for the entire package for anybody who wants it tonight. It's over at 12. There's the QR code. You can take a shot at it and learn more about it. But all those products are in it. I had an argue with my marketing director, and I said, no, I don't want to put that in. No, I don't want to put that in. Uh, but it's just got great value. So That's again, incredible value. Uh, so if you, if you take advantage of that opportunity with Artie, it's going gonna, it's gonna to give you a lot of powerful tools that you need. Uh, the other thing that I would recommend that you, uh, that you do with Artie is to check his website out, which is uh, 16 minutes. 16 minutes to success. 16 minutes to success. So you guys can, can scan this, but also 16 minutes of success for where's everybody the, uh, that's on the stream. Yeah, where's the link? We have a link. I'll show it, but I want everybody okay. to scan it. Okay. All right, so I'll show you, but 16 minutes of success.com. You go in there and you subscribe, and then every Wednesday, Artie is like pure gold. He literally just, I like to sit down and listen to him uh, because it, every single time that I listen to him, and he's 60 minutes, imagine that, right? Just a little drive from your home to the office or home to the uh, back or to the office back home and you're gonna get a little bit stronger right you don't know what you don't know the reason you haven't expanded more is because you haven't learned how to expand more right so uh, I definitely highly advise that you uh, take a little bit more of what Artie has to give out every right? Wednesday 1 o'clock to 1 16 tomorrow is sales it changes every week I've been doing it for almost two years and I noticed some of the people who are on that are here tonight. So you might want to take advantage of it. It's free, and, um, and you'll enjoy it because it's a boost. You know, every week, 16 minutes, boom. So if you guys already scanned that, I can show you over here. 
Uh, you go to 16 minutes success. And um, I did a typo there somewhere. 16 minutes to success. What? After the T? Minutes to success. What did I do wrong? Did I type? Is it one C or one? No. Is it one S? Yeah, right? So, um, 16 minutes to success. Yeah, I already had tried it before. Let me see this. Well, the comm's got a dot in the end. 16 minutes to success. Let me see what I did wrong. Yeah, 16 minutes to success. Yeah, but it's a dot org or dot com? Dot com. Dot com. 16 minutes of success. I think it's pretty good. No, actually, I miss, I miss an S over here. Let me try that. There we go. Yeah, so I think it was a www that I was not putting in. 16 minutes of success dot com. All right. Every Wednesday with, Ari, uh, with Artie Marin at 1 p.m. So uh, five more minutes with Artie. If anybody you have any other questions, we'll get Artie to answer them. And then we'll start wrapping up for the night. And we'll try to work on convincing him of coming uh, again to give us more of his gold. Anybody has any questions? Jimmy, do we have any questions on the stream? Uh, right OK. Any of you locally about this technology or survey? I'll share something with you in the meantime, right? Like, so um, on this whole subject of artificial intelligence right now, something that talking about tools that you can use to understand your audience uh, and understand the pain points. You guys were talking about pain points. Somebody said, uh, that they want to sell more vitamins. They want to sell vitamins, they want to sell gummies, etc. This is the uh, famous or infamous tool called ChatGPT, depending on your viewpoint. Um, I'm going to ask it, what are the 10 most common pain points that consumers have? Forget about my table. Um, before making a decision about what anti-aging product or supplement to choose. So you have this ability to learn at a very, very fast pace. It's called deep learning. So you, know, you take what Artie's teaching, what I'm teaching, and you look for tools like this to help you understand. Because this is actually, this is data that is being taken from the internet. It's not being made up. It's like, they have a data set. Artificial intelligence operates with the data the humans have fed it. It's not data being made up by them. So you're using this data to maximize, to speed up your ability to learn and understand something. And you have access to it for free. This tool is for free. If you want to, instead of waiting two seconds, wait one second, you can pay $20 a month. And it gives you a response faster. But you can see here uh, pain points, product effectiveness. And it gives you an explanation. Consumers often struggle to discern if the product will be effective in achieving their desired results. OK, well, now you have an idea about how to write your copy, right? Because they have a pain point about results. Uh, lack of scientific evidence. Well, what does that tell you? If you have any lab work, if you have any analysis, maybe if you don't have anything, you should order some lab work. Get some analysis. Get a university to vouch for your products, right? So you can use that. Why? Because many consumers are concerned about the lack of scientific evidence supporting the effectiveness of certain products. Price. OK, well, that's an issue, right? Anti-aging products can, be, can vary widely in cost, with, with some being quite expensive. Consumers often wrestle with determining whether a higher price necessarily equates to a higher quality product. So if you want to have a higher price one, use that in your marketing so everybody knows why yours is so special and why it's much more expensive. There's beauty creams like Lamel that two ounces cost you $250 when you can buy two ounces on Amazon for like a dollar. What's the difference? It's how you market and how you communicate. Of course, better quality ingredients is a part of it. Ingredient transparency. They want to know what they're putting on their bodies. Well, that makes sense. Why don't you communicate that on your marketing? Uh, potential side effects. Consumer may be concerned about potential side effects or long-term health impacts. You see how we just got a lot of data about what people are saying and their complaints? I can even ask it to 
Can you give me more data on number three? More on number three. Price, the price complaints or price problems that they might have. And just as simple as that, it's going to tell me, it's going to break down now more the issue of price, cost effectiveness, <laughs> budget constraints, long term cost, hidden costs. I mean, right? This one right here is a grand total of zero dollars. Right? And you, you get it by. If you, the, what, what you could buy right now on artificial intelligence is training on how to use it. That's what I'm selling. I'm selling how to use it, all right? But this tool, by the way, you can YouTube it for free. You can, you can train. There's a lot of information on YouTube. You don't even have to buy my stuff, to be honest. This is a tool that you can access for free. And, and the way that you access it is by going to chat.openai.com. And there's also an app called ChatGPT, which is free. And you can use it to deep learn this stuff that Artie has been talking about, of course. Now, here's the thing that I know that an old school marketer and business guy like Artie will tell you. Do not get away from human contact. Do not get away from talking to people, texting them one-on-one -on -one contact, understanding what the indicators are, their responses are. You can get away from that. You want to add things like this to deep learn a lot more so you can really understand at a broad level what are the, the complaints on the industry. But it's going to make it a lot less effective unless you have human contact to it or connect with people at a human level. But these are tools that are available for all of us to use, all right? Rob? Can, can somebody give Rob a microphone, please? Just so we can give the audience the experience. Thank you very much. Uh, I have one question for Mr. Artie. I, I, I obviously work for Manuel. I firmly believe in the, 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 the use of surveys. But I have one question that um, I'm more interested in your perspective on this than I actually believe the thought myself. Um, the main thing I've heard against the use of surveys is that uh, some people don't know what they want or you're interested in a very new product. There's a quote from, uh, I think, Ford who says, if I, if I asked you what they wanted, they would have said a faster horse. Mm -hmm. That kind of a concept. Artie uh, what, and I talked about it on the podcast, there you right, go. Artie? What, what, what would be your thought on that, on that concept? Well, you should definitely watch the podcast. Uh, but uh, <laughs> uh, the, uh, the one example I can give you is uh, I'm going to get to Ford in a minute. Uh, in my seminars, I, in, the, in the past, I would hand out at the end of a full day seminar, there'd be a survey they'd fill out. And the trick to that, by the way, in case th some of you are in front of groups, is you do not hand out the survey at the end. You hand it out before you end. Because as you know, if you hand it out, you say, thank you very much for coming. And now half of them out the door, Please fill out the survey, forget it. So it, what it is is, I have three more important points to share with you. Before I do, underneath your chair, on your chair, on your desk is a survey. Fill it out, and then I'm going to tell you the last three points. Nobody leaves. Everybody fills it out. But what about the person who doesn't? The person who's like, I approach him. And I say, you're not filling out your survey. And he says, no, I don't do surveys. Oh, you're exactly the person I need to survey. <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. Oh, OK. Mm -hmm. So going back to Ford, there was plenty of surveys that Henry Ford was doing. True, for people who don't know the quote, um, he. Uh, um, Jobs was asked, did you survey on the iPhone and so on? And he said, if Henry Ford was surveying his public on, on transportation and what they want, they would have said, we want a faster horse. Now, would any of anybody said an automobile? No, because it wasn't conjured yet. It wasn't real. That's innovation. That's imagination, and imagination is a whole step above survey. Right? But right now, we're dealing with the real world. You want to know what they think, right? It's a great point, because all, all these services that we have exist right now. 
We're solving problems right now. So we gotta understand that. There's all, all these other people that are trying to innovate. That's a whole different story. Right? They're, they're living in their world, like they used to call Steve Jobs, um, they said, I read his book, great book, tells his story really in depth. He, uh, he lived in a reality distortion field. So that, that's a way of describing an individual that is innovating because that reality distortion field is just something that the rest of humanity cannot visualize and he's creating it. So he, he would say that he wanted something and everybody would say, that's crazy. And then he said, well, you either get it done or I'm gonna step in there and do it myself because he lived in this reality distortion field. That's different, that's a different world than you, know, you as a consumer, you as a, as a brand owner, coming up with the actual information that you need to market correctly your products and services because the problems already exist in society. He was a visionary. The vision of a car, right? But even that, it had research and survey connected to it. If you look at all great innovations, they all had this depth of, of, of research at the same time the, the genius ability to take the research and come up with something unknown. That's something. So I'm gonna ask a favor to everybody that's here right now. Uh, we have um, 58 people on YouTube right now and probably a bunch more on Facebook. Do me a favor and open up another browser and go to 16, www.16 M I N S, minutes of success. 16 minutes M I N S, not minutes, right? No, the whole word. The whole word, yeah. Yeah, 16 minutes of success.com and opt in to Audi's workshop because it's going to help a lot of people. Uh, it's basically every single week, 16 minutes, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to actually make you better. So please go ahead and do that right now before we end and confirm in the chat. I'm actually looking right here on YouTube right now, and let me know once you opt it in, all right? I have it right here on my uh, phone. Um, we'll take one question from the audience over here, from the YouTube audience, Artie, and then we'll wrap it up. Okay. But you guys in the stream, please confirm and let me know when you opt it in to Artie's list uh, on 60minutesofsuccess.com, all right? Um, Carl Eddington, she says, can you say anything about selling art, music, books? Well, all right, now let's, let's take a step up here. We're talking about selling art or music. Now we're in aesthetics. And aesthetics have a whole set of, a whole set of what? A whole set of no rules, okay? There's art that people consider ugly art that sells, all right? There's, there's fright art, there's all manner of things. So it's a little more difficult to survey aesthetics, but it can be done. And the best way to do it that I think of immediately is comparison, right? If you have a diverse set of art up there, which one appeals to you? And then with that, which, tell me more about that, right? I'll give you an example of one I've done concerning art in that sense. I had a client who was the window dresser for Macy's meaning every Christmas he was hired and his crew to come in and do the big Macy windows in New York. That's a big deal. So we, he drew out what he was gonna do. We made a mock-up, we put it in the window. This was December 16th or something like that. Pretty early, or maybe earlier. And we surveyed the people passing by. And we said, what do you think about the window? Does it appeal to you, etc.? And then we said the key question we were after: Is there any part of the window that you like the best? And you know what? They kept talking about the corner. They said we love the corner. That's so. Why do you like the corner? Again, we need to understand. And we would take the aggregate, all those answers, and we expanded the corner into half the window. And it was a big, big success for my client, right? We went to the public and asked them. Now, again, artists have vision. You have a lot of artists who died starving and their paintings are worth 
gazillions of dollars now, right? Now you can say they didn't survey, but you, you're not going to get an artist to go to the public. I mean, one person did actually. Now that I think of it, um, there was an MD. I forget his name. Uh, very so, talking about books, and he wrote about five books, medical doctor, and they were all very successful. And what he did is he surveyed hundreds and hundreds of prior books in a similar vein. And he took the results and he wrote based upon his survey. Not many people can do that. That's tough. That's amazing. So um, some beams been saying great things about you. She's been on your list for a while. Nancy subscribed. RG, subscribe. Carol says subscribe. So we got a bunch of people that are opting in. So you guys here, raise your hand if you subscribe to Artie's list. Okay, awesome. Amazing. Okay, so uh, Artie Marion, thank you so much for the presentation thank today. You. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. We're going to be working on bringing Ari for a follow up training. Thank you so much, Artie. Thank you. All right. We're going to do a quick picture with Artie. All right. And um Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, guys, everybody in here, right? Good. Standing up or are we come out there? Uh, I think you come out like that. How's that? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, great. Everybody like pretend to be super excited to be here at AGM. Yeah. yeah. All right, here you go. Okay, awesome. Okay, great. Great job, guys. <laughs> Thank you, Carl. Yeah.